Good evening. Welcome to this evening's Midweek Faith Boost. I'm Pastor Benjamin Moyoambuya. Would you please in your Bibles turn with me to Ephesians in chapter number 3 and we're going to focus on verse number 20. Now, today is the last session of the series, The Epistle of Prayers. We've taken time to examine in depth and in detail the prayer that Paul prayed for the church then and the church now uh, as recorded in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse number 14 to verse number 20. And we trust that this series has been enriching and has helped you to appreciate the depth of Paul's heart, but also God's desire for his people and where it is that God wants us to be. Shall we now please turn to Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse number 20. The Apostle Paul says, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. This last part of this prayer is what is known as the doxology. Now a doxology is a short hymn of praise or of prayer exalting God for his glory. In other words, a doxology can be described as describing the character of God and ascribing the glory due to his name for who he is and what he has done. We see right through in scriptures, in the Psalms, and also in most of the epistles that they are filled and punctuated with doxologies to God. These doxologies describe the character of God and they ascribe glory to God based upon who he is and what he has done. As we come to the end of this series, it is befitting that we pause and take time to give thanks to God for who he is and what he has done and to get into depth on what God is able to do in our lives. Now, before we do that, let's just do a quick recap to give context to where we find ourselves in Ephesians chapter number three. Now, the book of Ephesians can be broken down in two parts. In part number one, from verse number one, two, and three, the apostle Paul describes how that God worked in his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring about salvation for both Jews and for Gentiles. How that God loved us, how that God saved us, how that God raised us up. And so there we see how that God worked in our lives to save us. The first three chapters describe the work of God. And then the last three chapters of Ephesians, chapters number 4, 5, and 6, Six describe how that we, now that we are saved, whether Jew or Gentile, are supposed to live our lives. How do we work out our salvation? How do we work it out? How do we live it out on a daily basis? And so the last three chapters describe our walk in view of God's work. So chapter 1, 2, and 3, the work of God for salvation. Chapter 4, 5, and 6, the walk of the Christian in light of the work of God. And so the dexology, which is found in verse number 20, is more or less like a climax of Paul's letter. As Paul comes to the end of describing the work of God's salvation, as he comes to the end of describing what God has accomplished through his son Jesus Christ, he ends with this doxology that ascribes glory to God for his character and also glory to God for what he has done. And so let's begin to look at this doxology in more detail. The first thing that Paul does is that he declares the praise of God. He says praise is due to God for what he's able to do. Look at verse number 20. Now all glory to God, in other words, all praise to God who is able. Glory is due to God because he is able. God is able. It is common for us to uh, find ourselves in situations in life where uh, the situation seems impossible. The situation seems difficult. The circumstance is beyond ourselves. And in that situation, it is common for us to look at our lives and wonder and ask ourselves, is change going to happen? 
Am I going to get delivered? Am I going to get healed? Am I going to find the victory? Am I going to make a breakthrough? And in all of this, Paul says, God is able. God is able to heal. God is able to deliver. God is able to set you free. God is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm reminded in Exodus when the children of Israel left Egypt, the work of God, by the mighty hand of God, they came to a dead end. They came to the Red Sea and behind them was the armies of Egypt with Pharaoh pursuing them. And in front of them was a great body of waters. They had no boats. They had no means of crossing. And so there was a there was a Red Sea or a Dead Sea in front of them. And there was an army pursuing them. They would they would have perished. All they could see was disaster. But in the midst of that chaos and confusion, in the midst of a very difficult situation, God stretched out his hand and performed a miracle and he saved them. God is able to save us. And so Paul begins by reminding us that glory be go- belongs to God because God is able. Never forget that. Never forget that no matter how difficult your circumstances, no matter how hard the situation that you find yourself in, God is able. God is able to put food on your table. God is able to send your children to school. God is able to turn around that difficult and negative situation. God is able to soften your heart. God is able to bring back that wayward child. God is able. Now, after Paul talks about God being able, he doesn't stop there. He acknowledges that God is able not only to do what he promised that he would do, he says that God is able to do abundantly above all we ask, think, or even imagine. He goes on to explain that what God is able to do is beyond what you and me could ever think or even imagine. What God is able to do is beyond what you and me can ever think or can ever imagine. Where our limitations reach, where our our possibilities find the end, God is able to go beyond our possibilities. God is able to go beyond our limitations. God is able to go beyond what we think or even imagine. We tend to think of uh, uh, change in our lives in terms of our own strength and our own ability. But God works in us according to his power. So not only is God able uh, to work in our lives, no one is God able to do infinitely above all we ask, think, or even imagine. The, the power that works in our lives is the power, the, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. We see this in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 16. We also see this in Ephesians 1 verse 16 to verse number 20 and in Romans 8 and verse number 11. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is at work in our lives, in our situations, in our circumstances. Not even death or the grave could hold Jesus back. When the power of God was at work, it raised him. It brought him up out of the grave. There is no situation that is impossible for our God. There is no circumstance that God cannot turn around. There is no darkness that God cannot call back into light. There is no dead thing that God cannot raise back to life again. God is able to do above all we ask Think or even imagine according to the power that works within us, even the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It is an infinitely great power. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we declare the praises of God. God is able. And in verse number 21, he says, Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations. We ascribe the praise and the glory to him. He says, to him be glory. To him be glory. Paul's primary aim in describing the power of God in verse number 20 is to ascribe glory to him. 
He is the life-giving God. He is the soul-saving God. He is the resurrecting God. He is the all-powerful God. He is the infinitely good God and is the God who is worthy of all praise. He is giving God the glory and he calls you and me to join him in honoring and praising God. In view of all that God has done, in view that in view of all that God is doing and in view that all that God is going to do, our response must be to praise him. He says, to him be glory in the church. Now, you see, this phrase, to him be glory in the church, is only found in this portion of scripture. In other portions of scripture, we recognize that to him be glory is, uh, is mentioned but with a particular emphasis of to him be glory in the church, it is only found in this context, in Ephesians chapter number 3. What is Paul saying? Paul is saying that every person who has been saved by the grace of God, every person who has been reconciled to God through faith in Jesus Christ and now is a part of the body of Christ and now is a part of the church, that person should give glory to God for what God has done. Every Christian, every person who calls upon the name of the Lord and is a member of the church is to give glory to God for what God has done. And what has God done for that Christian? What has God done for those of us who call upon the name of the Lord? He saved us. He washed us in his blood. He delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son. He saved us from destruction. He saved us from the wrath that is to come. He saved us. Now we are the sons and the daughters of God. And our response must be to give him glory. And he doesn't end there. He also says we give him glory in Christ Jesus. This means by this means that the church which is saved and formed through Jesus Christ is to give glory to God in Jesus Christ. Just as we have been raised up and seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, we are to give glory to God in Christ Jesus. For as long as we remain in Christ Jesus, we are saved. For as long as we remain in Christ Jesus, we have hope. For as long as we remain in Christ Jesus, there is a future for us. And as we remain in Christ Jesus, we are to give glory to God. What is the duration of this giving of glory to God? Paul ends this dexology with indicating that uh, this giving of glory to God is something that will go on forever and forever. God has always been and will always be worthy of glory. And Paul invites all saints, saints in ages past and saints in ages to come, and those of us who are present here today to give glory to God, to join in that chorus of giving glory to God. So what have we been saying today in this doxology? The doxology describes the character of God it also describes the attributes of God. I began by looking at the attributes of God, that God is able, through his infinite power, to do exceedingly above all we can think or imagine according to the power of the Holy Spirit. And our response in view of what God is able to do must be to give him praise because he's good, because he's worthy of all praise, his mercies endure forever. As we come to the end of this series, we encourage you to take time to give God the praise. Just where you are, lift up a song of praise. Lift up a prayer of thanksgiving. Lift up a declaration of praise to God for who he is and what he has done. I'm reminded of what we used to say a long time ago. When the praises go up, the glory comes down. And when the glory of God comes, it changes everything. It changes circumstances. It changes situations. God is able. God is good and is worthy of our praise. Thank you for following this series. We trust that God has blessed you and God has enriched you. To him alone be all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Click the subscribe button. Click the like button. Share this wonderful story of hope. Share this wonderful message of encouragement and let the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ spread 
on this earth. We love you so much and we look forward to seeing you for our in-person services. Our first service is at 8 a.m. in the morning. Our second service is at 10.30. God bless you and have a wonderful week in Jesus. So glad you were part of this Faith Boost broadcast. What we'd ask you to do is go to YouTube and subscribe to the Miracle Life channel. On Facebook, like the Miracle Life Facebook page. That way you'll receive notification when there's new content. We've got content like this that's regularly coming out to bless you, to help you. Also notifications that will help you in your walk with God, what's happening at the church and things like that. And with notifications, it actually gets pushed to you and it's a great way to be reminded. So go to the YouTube channel, subscribe and go to the Facebook page and like it. God bless you.